this is this is pretty high profile. So this, this is one of these things where it's gonna it's gonna go at the speed of, of, of the, the space shuttle or something. Like well, and interestingly, we um, were so nimble that we actually copied what the Colossus said last night, <laughs> which is <laughs> we changed the slide to accommodate them. Um, you know, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, you know, then they and then you win. So in our view, the spectrum is past the ignore. Although there are still some in the payment system. At least in the world we work in, makes you ask what Bitcoin is, they still haven't heard of it. So there's still this huge ignorance. Um, and there's the folks who say, ah, I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, you know, then when they move into the lab, they're looking at the press releases that are both good and bad. Um, you know, then they fight you. So I, I think in the spectrum, we're at the lab and fight spot. We're somewhere in the middle there. We're somewhere in the lab and yep. fight spot. Okay. Now, now, the FTC is actually, when you think about kind of the regulatory structure, You've got FinCEN, who's already all over you. You've been now have. It's been mentioned that Bitcoin could be, you know, could eventually fall under the uh, the auspices of the money and the trading, um, the CFTC, um, and then finally, the FTC was all over Facebook credits um, a while back. So we're in the spot where, as a, from a, and then from a payments perspective, when we go down to that kind of that fourth bullet point. Where, we'll, when you look at the process of what this is, eventually somehow cash or, or U.S. dollars has to be applied to this new currency or to this new, you know, to this virtual currency. And the payment systems that are in existence now are working against you. So, do you want to kind of walk through that? Do you mind? No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. So, when you think about the, the way you get U.S. dollars out to something else. From a foreign, consider this a foreign exchange transaction. It's another currency. So you have to fund, you have to take US dollars and you have to buy something else. Okay, in order to do it, if you were to do it via a debit card, for example, somebody there has to have a merchant account to accept MasterCard, Visa, PIN, debit, things like that. So that merchant account has to be underwritten. And when you say that you are a third party processor and you deal in virtual currency, You've now removed that component from funding the FX, if you will, for the exchange. There's your hurdle number one, and that's not regulatory. That's the network that, that owns that system. So you've got so we've got a hurdle there that's prevalent, and and it's and it's it's in black and white. There are prohibited merchants categories, MCCs, that will say we will not do you know acai berry things and. And you know, and, and gambling. gambling and porn. Although I think porn is a great is a, is a great opportunity. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, whatever. It's nine o'clock in the morning, people. Come on. Um, but but the, but there's a hurdle there because we live by that debit card. We live by that credit card. So if you were to use this debit card to try to do internet gambling or anything like that, it wouldn't work. There, people cannot get a merchant account. If you try to get one, you might have to get one offshore. But it still is owned by Visa and MasterCard, and they have a prohibited merchants list. Um, the next one is ACH. Most of the time, I see people are using wire transfers to fund a Bitcoin trade because of the finality. Wire transfers out, and if you don't have a bank account, how are you going to do a wire transfer? See, there's always if you want the anonymity, and I'm going to let Marianne keep that. There's no anonymity in using Fedwire or an international wire to fund a Bitcoin transaction. So we were thinking last night, and we are the two smartest people we know, um, <laughs> why do you want anonymity? And that's a discussion we'd like you guys to just throw out here, because we understand the trading side of anonymity, but why you need it in the payment system, and certainly no one's gonna, you know, we can, we've come up with great ideas as far as why it's needed, but, you that's know, how the Fed's looking at it. Exactly. I mean, at the end that's of the day, the audit trails, the benefit of anonymity that gets marketed also which calls into question why do you, in a legitimate payment <coughs> transaction, need anonymity? Why is it? So that's where the, the regulatory folks are really going to spend a lot of time because the other problem with the payment systems is they're all systems. They, a payment should be a payment, it should be money movement, but we created the ACH, which has its own processes, the systems, rules, regulations. Acronyms. We have wire transfer, which has its own rules and systems. You and, have da and data. And data. And data. To track, to look at. 
including the data that goes with the transaction. Um, you, you know, look at the credit card, the debit card. So those are all payment systems. Every single, there is not a payment system. Every one of those is a payment system. And so when we throw in this perceived new payment system, um, it, it's going to collide. And at the end of the day, the original payment system is where the funds come from, with some exceptions, right? You, can, you get your paycheck and you go to Walmart and cash it. And, you know, you're kind of outside the banking system there, which is where some of the opportunity or anonymity pieces, because there's, if you took it out, if you, if you take the money out of your account and, and buy the Bitcoin, it says somewhere that that's what happened. If you don't, then you have this end-to-end -end anonymity that, it, like you said, if you choose to go that route, then you, you, you've given up the rights that come with the payment system. So, and also, I mean, I would buy, buy debit cards. Yeah, I, I would turn the question around, and why does the federal government have a right to know who I am? Because they don't want you sending money to It doesn't matter. Where do they get the right to do that? Yeah, we can't answer that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what we said. We don't have the answer, but that, that's the nature of the way they Exactly. Do. You know, that's, uh, I, I mean, that's just the thing that I wrestle with every day of, of my life, but, you know, it's one of those things where if you're going to do a workaround, figure out, you know, can you, can you knock them down? Can we beat them? Probably not. Can we go around them? Probably. You and know, for how long? But for how long? No and regulation was ever made before a crime. Everything yeah. was made after. So they're responders. They're not proactive. They don't understand. They don't go out looking for things. Regulations and laws come about. Yes. <clears throat> um, so I work for a payment processor in Atlanta, Georgia. And I totally agree that you know it needs to, the anonymity thing needs to go away in order to um, uh, to to move the adoption forward into the rest of the um, payment space. But um, you know why if if you are an existing merchant and and you are uh, exchanging currency, what's to stop you from all of a sudden adding Bitcoin to the currency and and, and just rolling that into your current business and you're taking debit card payments. Why not do that? I'm starting to, I'm looking at like the, the rules around the SIP codes. Um, 6051 is one, that I, is one that I think fits. And uh, that's, anyway, um, why? I don't, I'm not seeing the, the barrier, to, except for nobody's doing it yet. Nobody's taking a, a debt. Card. <coughs> the problem, I mean, the problem that is that exists as a merchant, there's a few different things. Uh, first of all, the currency of the United States is U.S. dollar. So when you take a debit transaction, you take PayPal, you take all these things, you get you get compensated, you get remunerated in U.S. dollar. Now we have a Bitcoin, which is basically a, a foreign currency. Okay. So most merchants right now are de determining whether we take whether they take Bill Me Later, if they're e-commerce, or whether they do PayPal, whether they do that type of stuff, which is now mainstream. You're talking something. We're talking something that's way out there. And to, to, to introduce the concept of Bitcoin to a Verizon wireless who really could use it, it's one of those things like, okay, and now you have a currency fluctuation, you have a value fluctuation that they're not comfortable with, you've got a lot of things where it sounds logical, but it's not, it, it, it's not that easily embraced. The other thing, if I may just one minute, is that what, 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 it's not about the merchant side, it's the anonymity between <coughs> me and you. I don't know who you are, I don't know your name, but I've been trans, I can't see it, I don't have my contacts in, um, but I, I can trans, transmit millions to you, and we are now money transmitters. Now you could be in Cyprus, you could be in Iran, you could be anywhere in Syria, and there's a, the, the government is not concerned about paying Verizon wireless. What they're worried about is the anonymity across the cross border where funds have nothing, to, there's nothing to track it. In an AC transaction or wire, you've got the ordering, you know, the ordering party. You've got all the information of where it's going, how the bank is. But, but you also have this thing called OFAC. OFAC, And 27 yeah. other directories that you have to bounce every single one of those transactions off. Have you heard of the OFAC, OFAC SDN? No. Specially, de uh, specially designated nationals. If you're on that list, and they'll add you anytime they want, all transactions stop at, its, at, at whatever point it gets into or out of the United States regulatory environment. So if you're, if, if, so anonymity, as much as we like, I think it's cool, if your name ends in Bin Laden, and, I could, and if you're Sarah,